thank you everybody so much for coming today to Glory Road and to receive the Word of God and the teaching that I have prepared for you. I really believe this will just transform your life uh, and, uh, and be able to cause you to walk in a way and live in a way that you never have before. So pay close attention to the scriptures that I'm going to talk about today and from the uh, context where I'm going to bring it because it, it is fascinating. <laughs> I mean, I can never get tired of the things I'm going to talk about today. I can't get tired of talking about faith and life and, and, and all of that and the, and the force of God. We're going to be talking about uh, may the force be with you. You're going to want to get this message. Uh, may the force be with you with you. So let's go over here to our foundation scripture. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Let me break this down a little bit. Now faith is. Faith is not faith if it's put in the future. Well, I know one day God is going to bless me. That's not faith. What that reveals to me is somebody doesn't see what they already have. They don't see what's in the closet. They don't see what's in the secret place. They'll say, one day faith is going to do it. No, it doesn't say this. It says, now faith is so when a person is speaking of faith, they're always speaking from the position of what they already possess. If you don't see it, you can't possess it. But if you can see it, you already possess it. And you're not confessing to possess. You're confessing what you already possess. That's faith. So if God said you're blessed, you're not trying to get blessed. You're not one day looking for a blessing. You're not trying to, oh, I hope God do all these right things so God will bless me. You are blessed. He's already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So, how does faith talk in that kind of principle, that kind of atmosphere, when you get up every day and He says you're blessed already? Faith doesn't talk like it's not blessed. Well, we got so many challenges before us, I don't know what we're going to do. I sure hope God does something by some hook or crook. I sure hope that you know He sends somebody our way because we sure need a blessing. You know, no, no, no. Now faith is. So faith always gets up and talks blessed. Man, that's something good. So now faith is the substance, or you could put in there force. Now faith is the force. Obi-Wan. Yeah, or Luke. You know, you know, take your thoughts. Listen to your thoughts. Be mindful of your thoughts. So now faith is the substance or the force of things hoped for. So faith becomes the force behind manifesting the things that you hope for. Hope is the blueprint of what you see. If you can see it, your faith, hope says, hope is a, an imagination established upon the promises of God. So if God has said it, it builds an image in your mind. That's what you hope for. Hope means in, turn, in, in uh, earnest, intensive expectation that what God has said what He's promised, it is. It's available to me. So if God said it, it means it's available to me. I can now have an expectation that I can walk it out. Well, then faith comes along and says, well, if it's available now, I'll just have it now. So faith and hope work together. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. And when you get an expectation and a hope that says, if God said it, I have it. If that man of God says it, I have it. Now you can have faith in what I'm saying. Because what I'm saying ought to build an expectation and an image on the inside of you. And your faith ought to say, well, if he said it, I have it, that settles it. That goes across the board. I mean, if you say you believe in somebody, you believe in what they're saying, then you ought to have a faith that says, well, if you say it, I have it. The centurion said to Jesus, you speak the word only, it shall be done. Why? Because he's saying as soon as you say it, I know you're only going to say what already is done. That's my confidence. That's why I know if you say it, brother, it is good as done because you're only going to tell me what already is. You ain't going to tell me to do something so I can make it happen. You're going to tell me what already is. Now that is awesome. Now if we can get our conversation with one another to have those principles, 
in line so you don't tell somebody, well, you ain't ever going to be nothing because from the mind of God, that's not what he thinks of them. He's going to tell them what already is. He's going to tell them what a blessing they are. He's going to tell them that you've been sent here to change the world. He's going to tell them what already is to get their mindset to the place that they can enable or engage this force of faith to manifest whatever it is God says is finished. My God, man, this is, this is how the kingdom functions. Without faith, you can't please God because God already sees what you are. It's us that don't see it. But when we start seeing who we are in Christ, we'll start talking like the way He sees us because He already sees that it's finished. He didn't send you here <laughs> to try to reach the finish line. Oh, we're in a race. Oh, gosh, I'm so tired. I'm just trying to make the finish line. No, He come to, to send you here to start what's already finished. See, the run that we're used to, here you are, you got the Olympics. Okay, you got these 10, 12 people online. Ready? Go! And they all take off. But in the mind of God, the starting point is the finish line. So when everybody else takes off, bang! When they take off, you just sit down and rest. You got there before they did. Because you started at the end. That's what faith talks like. It talks like it's finished. So when God gave me this idea, this invention, I've been treating it like it already is. Nothing can stop it. Because I already believe He gave it to me. It's already finished. He's just trying to show me what already is and wants me to walk towards it. <laughs> he just wants me to start believing, talking like it's already done. I've been doing that for 11 years now concerning some of the things He has done. And had I not, I wouldn't have walked in some of the, the things that were already prepared for me. All He needed me to do is walk it out. And you and I need to understand how this works, okay? So now faith is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So if God shows you something and you say it, it's all the evidence you need. Your faith is the title deed. If I owned a Rolls Royce and, I, and I'm standing before you and I'm dressed in what I'm dressed in and you go, mm -hmm, yeah, you got a Rolls Royce all right. In your mind, you know, like, that's the only way you got it. Oh, I said, well, hold on a second. And I just pull out of my pocket here and I say, well, here, um, here's the title deed. Oh, you do have a Rolls Royce. You do have a Rolls Royce. Woo -hoo -hoo. I'll ask you a question. Have you seen it? You mean you're going to believe in something you can't see? Well, I mean, it says right here that you got it. So you're going to put faith in the words that are on this piece of paper. Plus, you're going to start believing what I say. Oh, yeah, because this paper just validated what you said. You didn't have to see it. You just got it on a piece of paper, some words that validated what I said. So if you, if, if you didn't have the paper, would it make what I said less powerful or less true? Absolutely not. The problem is we don't want to believe what nobody's saying until we see it. And that's where they miss it. If we can believe the things I'm saying just because I'm saying it, <laughs> you start believing it, it's going to be validated because eventually things start showing up in your life. That's what faith is and that's what faith does. We have just kind of took it opposite of that and haven't understood it. So let's go up here because I want to validate this thing, this force I'm talking about, this substance. And uh, this is over here in Hebrews chapter 10. So just go up a few verses. We're going to start reading in verse 34. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. In other words, these were some disciples that got conflicted with, you know, persecution and all that stuff. And some people came and got their goods and, and kind of spanked them a few times and said, mm -hmm, to bring persecution and all of that stuff. But listen to what they said. You, but you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. See, somebody come and take your stuff. It feels like, oh, my whole world is gone. My stuff is missing. I worked so hard to get that. But no, notice this, they said, You took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Now, what is he saying here? He's saying anybody can come and take your goods all right, but they can't take your faith. And faith is the force or the substance that created the goods to start with. <laughs> you see that? It created it. It's the one. It's the force. 
It's the thing that created all of it. God said and everything was. So if, as long as people, now I got a cat over here trying to jump on my Bible. <laughs> look at this, look at this thing. Now this is the most loving cat. His name is Michael. <laughs> look at this thing. Look, he just, he just wants to be pet. <laughs> the animals have gone bad. <laughs> Let me see if I can get the cat out of here. Hold on one sec, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, go on out there. You know, I put I put something on the door, and they've gotten so big and strong they can push the thing away. All right. Well, where was I? Okay. So <laughs> here, so he's saying that people can come and take your goods. Now, if when we master this stuff, when we master walking in the life of God. Nobody can touch your stuff. But when you're learning this and some stuff gets taken from you, he's trying to tell you, remember, you have something in you and in heaven at the same time. And it's a substance and a force that causes you, if you and I will focus on it, to make you feel like you ain't lost nothing. Because all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, and that substance and that force goes to work. And that's what he's trying to encourage them with. Don't you get worried and all fearful and fretful and crying and act like you lost anything. You don't lose anything in the kingdom. Just imagine the disciples here, they started to see the two fish and a couple loaves of bread. Somebody was taking it out and they're thinking, oh my gosh, we, I mean, we only got, I mean, got five, six, seven, eight thousand people out here. Fifteen thousand could have been. And, and we've got a couple of fish and someone just took. Now we got minus Three, I got three fish left. I got minus, and I got two, and then and I got one. All of a sudden, boom! The whole thing fills up. See, it doesn't matter what it looks like here. The glory of God can replenish just like that once we start to know how to use this thing. So he said, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance, cast not away therefore your confidence. Or the word there is faith. Don't cast away your faith and count it as if, well, when they got your goods, they took your faith too. <laughs> no, don't look at it like that. The faith is the substance. It is the thing God uses in you and me to manifest the kingdom of heaven in our life. <laughs> so whatever's in you, you know, you start talking like it's in you, that's called faith. And that's the thing you got to have in your heart and in your mouth in order to make this stuff manifest. For you need patience that after you have done the will of God. Now, what's the will of God? Talk like Him. This is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask or make demand on anything, we know we have it. Why? Because we petitioned, made desire, spoke with our mouth the very thing He already gave us. He gave us the desires of our heart. So I speak what He already gave me, and I act like it's so. That's called faith. Now, faith, it needs a partner here, and the partner to faith is a thing called patience. Patience isn't sitting there, it means just sitting there and take it while somebody twists your nose or pinches you and knocks you upside head and mm -hmm, just say, when are you going to quit? No, patience is just being constant all the time. If God said it, it is so, and I'm not moving from that. That's called patience. You get settled in that, it ain't going to take no time from the time you say it, from the time it manifests. When you get faith and patience working together on the same law, the law of lordship and the law of the spirit of life ain't nothing going to stop you. It'll manifest very quickly. For you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise or the manifestation of the very thing God said that gave you hope. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now he's not saying, now, okay, see, now God's going to come one day in the future. Just keep holding on, brother, sister. Keep holding on. I know you're suffering. I know you're in pain. I know you're sick. But one day God's going to call your name. And when he calls, keep going, going, calls your name. And everybody's like, ooh, I feel the goosebump. <laughs> Then that sickness is going to, it will it might take you out. But God, he's going to allow that sickness to take you out so he can bring you in. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> it don't work like that, guys. So anyway, but he said, no. He said, with faith and patience, the glory of Christ on the inside is going to show up. It's going to show up speedily. Just hold on now. 
Believe it. Say it. Don't move from it. And that's going to determine how quickly the glory, the substance, the faith, the power, the force of God shows up. That's what he's saying here. For yet a little while. How long is that little while? All depends on how immersed you are, how much you believe, how much you're saying. You know, it ain't God. He's put you in control. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now, now <laughs> who's the he that's going to show up? Ah, oh, Jesus. That's what everybody's looking for. Jesus. No, it's called Christ. It's your inner man. The power of your inner man. The force in your inner man is going to stand up. Whenever, I don't care if it was Yoda, Obi-Wan Kenobi, whoever it was that was telling Luke, Luke, <laughs> Luke, you know, and always tell him to move in. The force be with you. Concentrate. Meditate. It's within you. Start seeing the inner man. Move from the inner man, not the exterior. Move from the inner man. Here Luke is on the Empire Strikes Back. You know, he's trying to go through this training and he's standing on his hand, you know, and he's, he's got Yoda at his feet. You know, Yoda's kind of positioned, you know, on top of uh, Luke Skywalker's feet. And, and, and then the rocks are being raised. And, you know, Skywalker is laying on the ground, you know, or, or not laying, but standing on one hand. He lifts up and all of a sudden he starts hearing something, you know, bad. And, and Yoda falls and the rocks fall and he falls. See, it's always the exterior things that causes us to miss the faith or the force that ought to be working constantly on the inside of us. This force is a, is a force of life. Faith is nothing more than the divine energy of God in motion. It's God's life on the inside of you in motion. It's moving because you believe it. It's moving because you're instigating it. You're engaging it. That's why faith without corresponding action is dead. If you don't believe in the life of God in you, you can't move. It, it holds you still in fear. Uh, what are we going to do? So, now the just or the righteous live... By faith. Didn't say they die by faith. Oh, he died in the faith. No, you don't die in the faith. The faith, the force of God, the life of God causes you to live. The righteous know this, at least to some extent. We apply it to certain areas of our life. But when it comes to our physical life, a lot of times we're, we come to the roadblock at, you know, everyone's got to die. We all kind of choke on that teaching. Everyone's got to die. But no, the just live. They live by faith. The, the, I mean, the faith works on the earth, guys. It works in this natural realm to heal your body. If it works in your body to heal you in this earth, it'll keep death off of you. It'll do it. But we got to know that. We got to be tuned into this thing. We really got to be taught this. Now, the just live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, oh, you believe God will heal your body. You'll get the healing. I believe God will, I mean, it'll manifest finances to pay that bill. And it'll manifest, it'll cause people to come to you and just say, I don't know why I'm doing this here. And we've had that happen so many times. That's why I believe in it. Not the money. I believe in the force of faith. I believe in the life of God. So it doesn't produce any fear in my life about how we're going to pay this and what are we going to do with this. I've long gotten past that. There was a time in my life when I first started walking by, by this when God told me to leave the job and, and live by faith and, and uh, put the music first and the ministry would come out of it. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, man. I mean, the money was a big deal with me because I was working to earn it for so long and, it, and I could see the power of it. It was providing. Not much, but it was providing. I mean, you know, when you got $20 at the end of the week to buy groceries for the week, it may not be much, but I tell you what, my wife was a master at spending $20. Good gosh, she's a master at it. That, that woman would take $20 and, and come back with, how did you get all this stuff? Would it cost $20? <laughs> like, you know, it, it's just amazing how many bags that woman could fill up with $20. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't suggest that you have that mentality, but that's where we were at at the time. But he said, now the just shall live by faith, and if any man draw back, he shall have no pleasure in him. So when it comes to believing that the power can heal you, but stopping that it can't cause you to live and conquer death, he said, my, my, my soul will have no pleasure in that. Because God, takes, God does not desire that any man die. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, the excelling of his servant, to walk in life. It ain't about money, it's about life. 
He said, now you draw back because the just live by faith. But if you, anybody draw back and try to use faith up to that point, up to the point of death, and then they let their faith go and say, well, it's, it's, we're supposed to die. He says, my, my, my soul has no pleasure in that. And then if you read down into that, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. We're not those who draw back unto death. So I know he's talking about death here. See, the son of perdition. You get right down to it. I know everybody thinks that's the Antichrist. Well, it is. It's anti anybody walking by Antichrist, anti-anointing, anti-life. Everybody seems to do that when it comes time to die. Oh, yes, I become Antichrist. I'm anti-believing that the life of Christ in me can save me and, and cause me to live. That's Antichrist, guys. Are you Antichrist? I don't believe in the devil. Do you believe in death? Well, aren't we supposed to die? Then it's anti-Christ. Christ means anointed one and the anointing, meaning anointing is burden removing, yoke destroying power. It's designed to remove death. You don't believe it will, you're anti-Christ. You don't believe that the power of Christ can save you from death. You better stop and think about that. So we are not of them who draw back unto death or unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We believe unto the life of God to set our body straight, to cause it to resurrect or stand again, to get the curse off of it so we can live. Then he comes and says, Now faith, this substance, this power, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then listen to this. He says, <laughs> get this, in verse 5, By faith, this same force, the same substance, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now that's when this being justified and people living by faith, that's what it looks like in its fullness. You don't have to die. You can escape it. You can step right on over and step on back if you want to. When you have life ruling in you, you can live in both realms. <laughs> you can live in the spiritual realm and the natural realm at the same time. How do you do that? Let me give you just a little hint. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to I, I'm trying to show this because I want this to sink in so bad with everybody. <laughs> Let's say you go to, oh, I don't know, uh, Universal Studios. And you get in a ride they have. Now, I guess they still have it. I went to this, took my kids on this ride. It's Back to the Future. You know, you get in this little capsule thing and, you know, you get about 30 people in there, 40 people, whatever it is, and then they close the door. And then while you're in there, while you're in there, you start seeing all these images. And then you start seeing, what's that? Mama needs the keys. <laughs> she, she's been walking out there, where are the keys at? <laughs> so, oh, there you are. Thank you, buddy. Oh. Yeah, I know the cats or something else. I'm going to do this one more time, guys. Let me put this thing over the door. That was my son coming in. He had to get the keys. Okay, I'm going to have to edit this, right? <laughs> so I might just leave it in there. How's that? Um, so let's say you're in this, this, this little capsule thing at Universal Studios uh, and, and doing this with the, uh, 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 what I say, uh, Back to the Future. As soon as they shut the door and then they got this big screen there, man, and you just like, in this thing, and all of a sudden you're in the car flying. Whoo! Now what's happening? Your mind is being tricked to believe you're actually in that thing flying up and you're having this experience. But you know you sitting in a capsule. You're you're I mean you that thing's gonna end, that ride'll end in a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, and you get out of that thing, you're in the same spot you were. Now what you what happened is, is you experience two worlds at the same time, in essence. It's kind of a, you know, left in the natural, but you're still kind of experiencing something else that seems so real to you. Well, in the spirit, you can actually step into the spiritual realm and walk in the natural realm at the same time. It'll be superimposed. That's what life does. Life allows that to happen. So you can step over there and live in that realm or step over here and live in this realm with a resurrected body, or you can live in both realms. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can have the capability of doing that anytime you want to. 
when we know how to master life. Man, I tell you what. Good God Almighty. I tell you, man, I, I get so excited over this because we're coming out of being limited in this natural state and finding out that we can live in two different realms at the same time. So the substance, faith, is the power of life that sustains you. I said the faith substance is the power of life that sustains you. The just live or have their lives sustained by faith. You want, your, you want to learn how to live? Learn to have faith in the Word of God. God's Word is life. you got to believe it. Now, God's Word is not just the written Word. God's Word is any word that's inspired by God for a man or woman to speak to you. That's the Word of God. When it's inspired by God and it's stretching you to become who you are on the inside, you better believe it. Don't start going to your concordance. I need to see that word and see if it's in there in the original Hebrew and the Greek. Man, I tell you, some of that stuff works good, but sometimes it'll hold you back where <laughs> you're so afraid. I don't believe that. You'll be judgmental about everything anybody says. You'll know it's right because it's always going to stretch you to your potential of Christ in you. Always. You'll know it's right. I'm telling you. I'm not telling you to go beyond chapter and verse, but what I'm trying to tell you is, is that if you can't find, if you can't find in here where it says don't drink, don't partake of strychnine or don't eat cyanide, or you don't find that in there. So if you don't find it in there, what are you going to do? Go grab some strychnine and just take it? Of course not. Your experience has already proven what's right and wrong. <laughs> so if I'm telling you you can live and not die, don't choke on it. Because it is in here, buddy. I'm going to tell you right now, you can find some scripture in here to tell you he wants you to live. Now, this might be a little longer of a, of a teaching day because I've got to get through this other stuff. So the substance is the power of life that sustains you. Faith, or the heavenly substance, is released in the earth through words. So let's go over here. Gosh, I know I've got a lot of scripture I've got to read today, but this is so important. Mark chapter 11. Please be patient with me. I've got to read these so that you can see the context of what I'm saying. We're going to start in verse 9. Mark chapter 11, verse 9. Be patient with me. And they that went before... And they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So blessed means empowered to prosper, to excel in things desired. So blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So if you want to know how to be blessed in the kingdom, step into the name of God, which is I am. You step into that and talk right now. Blessed you shall be. Because you're going to talk like you've got the authority. Of the of I am. That's the divine nature of God. That's what faith is. It's His divine nature in motion, speaking, speaking like you are exactly what God said you are, which is in His image. You start talking that way, buddy. You gonna start having blessing around the, the energy, and you'll start just changing things around you. But you're the one controlling it. You're the one engaging it. You're the one causing it to happen. My God, see, there's no situation you're facing right now that you can't change. It's just the knowing the law of how to do it instead of trying to use religion to do it. And then finding the resolve to get up and do it. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he had looked round about upon the things, and now the evening tide was there, and he went into Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the fig was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, Now you got to understand something. <laughs> that tree was talking to him. I'm not saying he was talking in Hebrew or, or Aramaic. I'm not saying he was talking in... I'm saying... When you're hungry and, and you walk in Walmart or someplace and, and you see that chicken they got sitting over there in that section, and he's talking to you, buddy. <laughs> it's like, you start drooling, your mouth starts saliva, and you start getting to the point where I'm hungry. I wasn't hungry until I smelled that, you know, until I saw that. It's talking to you. So he's hungry. This tree is talking to him, saying, hmm, 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 hmm. You, know, you can imagine what the tree is saying back to him. So, you know, he just goes on and tells him who's the boss. <laughs> you know, And he says to the fig tree now, no man eat fruit from thee hereafter forever. 
with those words, that tree began to be dried up from the very roots. All because he said something. Now, you know, in the movies, the force worked like, you see Yoda, and he'd be lifting the ship up or, or, you know, and moving things aside and all that. It was by what? The hand, you know, they just used it like it's all coming out of the hand. We're going to come back to that. So anyway, they see all of this, you know, Peter sees it. The next day they come back and wow, the tree is dried up from the very roots. Peter mentions that to Jesus is what Jesus said. Have faith in God. Now the literal translation is have the God kind of faith. So he's saying that was a demonstration of faith, the divine energy of faith. It was a demonstration of what God's power in you can actually accomplish. Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Have the faith of God. God would never tell you to have something you don't already have. He's saying, you have it. Now do it. Use it. You, you wake me up when a storm is going. I'm asleep on the pillow. He rebuked the wind and the sea, and he said, where's your faith at? <laughs> See, it's us that don't know who we are. Jesus knows, knew who we were because he was one of us. <laughs> he demonstrated what one of us could do. He was the example he showed us. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, which is telling us where the force is coming from your heart, your inner man, but shall believe. So you're going to have to believe that you've got a force on the inside of you that you can use at any moment you want to. The moment you open up your mouth, believing. Believe that those things which he saith, believe that whatever you say happens, shall come to pass. If you can believe it when you say it, then he shall have whatsoever he says. Well, I just believe God won't, won't want us to have that. Well, you, you know it's because you don't say it and don't believe it. You can believe and have anything that you say believing in your heart. There's nothing you can't possess. You've been given the authority to do it. Whoever dreamed that a man could walk up to a fig tree and say something to it and the tree would obey him? The only thing they take out of there, you hear that man, he's crazy. He's talking to trees. That's the only thing they would see. They would never report how oh, the tree obeyed him. Hmm. Tree, the tree really didn't obey him. It, it obeyed his faith. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Jesus said it. He walked away, but his faith was standing there making sure that the commandment was going to be followed. God always makes sure that His Word will not return unto Him void. There's power in the Word to bring itself to pass. You can speak it and leave. There's power in those words you can't see that's going to bring it to pass. It's an energy, but it came out of you from a believing heart. My God, I'm getting so excited. So He says, therefore, because if you will understand that whosoever shall save this mountain, be thou removed, to be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Therefore, and when you get that, what I say unto you, what things soever you desire. When you pray or when you speak, when you make a decree, when you make demand upon it, the potential within you, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them, or believe that you have them when you speak, and then you shall receive it. It's all coming back to this force of faith that's on the inside of you. And no matter what happens, you've got a force on the inside of you and in heaven at the same time. Now, let's get back to this hand deal. Let's go over to Psalm, um, you no, know, Proverbs, I'm sorry, Proverbs 18, 20 and 21. We read this quite often, but it's important. So we have been given this substance and force to live by. So let's go over here. In verse 20 of Proverbs 18, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Now, in other words, you'll have what you say. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. In other words, you're going to get more and more manifestation of what you say if you just fill your lips up with what you believe in your heart. Well, I don't know what I really believe. That's your problem. <laughs> Find out what you, who, you, who and what you are, and I, you'll start believing you got some power. That'll cause you to open up your mouth. 
Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now remember we said, you know, Luke Skywalker and Yoda and, and um, Obi-Wan Kenobi and even Darth Vader, man, was just uh, moving and things would just, you know, and choke Darth Vader would choke, choke people with his head, you know. He ain't even touching them. He's going, mm, you know, the force, <laughs> you know, the dark side. You know, and you got all this, again, life, death, blessing, cursing, light, dark, all of that. Same thing. It's a force. It's the force of faith. It's life, man. It's power and might, either used for you or against you. There's a dark, dark side to life when you start looking at life from a wrong perspective, you see. So, you know, you have, you have to understand that. But now notice this. They use their hand. <laughs> wave and things start happening. But listen to this. Death and life are in the power. The word power there, friend, is the word hand. That's a literal translation of it. So let's put it this. Death and life are in the hand of the tongue. In other words, God has chosen to, to make the tongue the tool, the place let's say the, the, the chair where the authority sits. Oh yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've uh, given it unto the hands of John to take care of that situation. That's what ambassadorship is. You're handing the authority over to them. Yeah, I, hand, I gave it to them to handle. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, he's he going to handle things. I've handed it over to them. See, that's authority. I've given them the authority. All power has been given unto me, both in heaven and earth. And Jesus said, now you go. He handed it to you. He told you, go preach. Preach is to declare and decree and to, to, to demonstrate with words. You speak it, the words will be confirmed with signs and wonders. It's through words. So when, when, when Luke and them are doing the force with their hand, God's just saying the way the kingdom works is it works with words. Your word is the hand. Your tongue becomes the hand. It's the hand. Your faith is the hand that goes down into a spiritual realm on the inside of you, gets a hold of what you believe, and then you speak it. Now the life in those words goes to working to manifest what you said. This is not, this is not charismatic. This isn't just name it and claim it. This ain't about a get-rich-quick scheme. We're talking about the law of the spirit of life. We're talking about the law of faith. We're talking about the law of lordship. This is the reason why God said, children, obey your parents because they speak words and they've got life in them. Now do what they say and what they say will come upon you. The reward of the prophet will come upon you if you do the word of the prophet, if you believe the word of the prophet. If you don't believe, you won't see it. And that's the frustration because we don't understand that the words are the hand of God. The hand of the Lord, you want it to be on your situation? It's going to be through words you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. coming out of you. That's who you are. You've been equipped to walk in His life, to walk in the divine energy of God. You're supposed to be partakers or partners with this divine energy. God's power is in you with all throughout your... I mean, it's in throughout everything about your life. My God, I get so excited over this. Matthew chapter 16 will be the last verse to read here. Matthew chapter 16, just, just one verse here. He says over here in verse, well, two verses, sorry. Verse 18 and 19. Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19. And I say unto thee. It's Jesus talking. I say unto thee. Now remember, <laughs> he knows you will have what he says because he knows he has what he says. When, he, when Jesus says, therefore I say unto you, oh, I'll tell you right now, his words are going to happen. All you got to do is believe him. So if he said, therefore I say unto you, what things for every desire when you pray, believe that you receive and you'll have them, then you a guarantee. If he has what he says, you're going to have what you say. <laughs> Man, see, see, you come up under the truth of that law, ain't nothing can stop what you say because Jesus already said, if you can believe it, you're going to have it. I sure hope this works. <laughs> we got to get past that. So, there they are, so I say in also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What was the rock? It was the rock of Christ in you. 
And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, or whatever thou would unlock or lock up on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. He's given you the authority. How? With words. That's how you bind and you loose. Well, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And notice how that don't ever work. Why? People don't even believe in the power of their words. If they did, they'd say, just get. The devil got to go. You ain't got to go through some song and dance, pray for three hours, oil casting on them, and just uh, doing all that, put the robe over your head, and, and then let's just back off and give, the, give God time to work. God don't need time to work. He's, he don't work in time. He, he works now. <laughs> it's us. Well, let's just see if something happens here. That's what we do. <laughs> so I, I'm just trying to tell you guys, let you know, you got this life on the inside of you. It's faith. Faith is the divine energy of God in motion. When you start speaking it, your words become the life of God in motion. And that's what you've got to start believing. You've got to believe on, on that as if it is your life. You've got to talk as if what you say is. Now, I'm telling you all of this because this I've learned from experience. You can sit around and not say nothing. Like the Lord told me not too long ago. He said, every moment you don't say anything is another moment. Nothing happens. <laughs> you know, everybody's like, well, I sure wish God would do that. How come God allows this happen thing to happen to good people? Might be good people, but he ain't saying nothing. They don't believe in the authority that they got. They don't understand the laws. Now, that don't make them bad people. It just means they don't know. And God said we're destroyed for our lack of knowledge. We don't know. We ain't got preachers telling us this stuff. So we just follow everybody else and then we just go, to, you know, the broad way where everybody else is going. In the, ch the church is going the same direction the world's going in when they don't stand in the authority of God, when they don't know who they are. I don't care. On the outside, they may not praise and worship. On the inside in the church, they might praise and worship. But if none of them are saying anything with any authority, ain't nothing going to happen. There's no difference between the two. It's just one is going through the motions of trying to stir themselves up in the praise and the way. And I'm just trying to, trying to, but they're both dying. So there's no one that's thinking, I have authority with my faith. I have authority with my life to swallow up death. Well, I'm here to tell you that you do. Start believing in that today. Throw your life into it. Don't just pretend. Don't just put one foot in and one foot out. <laughs> Get in. Start believing everything you say is going to happen. I guarantee you, you're going to start getting results and it's going to flat out amaze you. <laughs> it will, the simple things. <laughs> you know, start decreeing just $5 in your life extra. Just, you know, if you need socks, don't, don't travel to Walmart to get them. Talk like you got them right now. And all of a sudden, Mima <laughs> or mother-in-law or... Friend next door, hey, look, we got something in the mail today. Yeah, there's four packages of socks, and I really don't need but three. You want, you want the package? You'd be amazed, man. <laughs> it's stuff. I mean, the kingdom works, guys. It does. We just are lazy and saying because we don't have the resolve, and that's because we don't know the laws behind them. It's my job to give them to you, so I hope that you believe what I say and start searching these laws out. Go to my... YouTube channel and all that, start searching these things out. All right, until we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you. Bye-bye.